Also, if you're watching this and you're pressuring anybody to try magic mushrooms for the first time, please don't do that. What is your malfunction? Today I'm here with my friend Winston. Oh. Hold my poodle. Hold my poodle. Hey yo, what's up? Y'all got a problem? He's a very good boy. Okay, yes, we're going to start. Hey everyone, it's Chrysantilis. Welcome. Today I'm gonna answer a very important question that many of you at home ask me on a regular basis. And when I'm out and about and I'm talking to people, I get this question a lot. Should I try magic mushrooms? How do I know I'm ready? How will I Maybe you've never tried a psychedelic. And today, we're gonna hop into six questions you should ask yourself before trying magic mushrooms for the first time. This is gonna be a fun, very low-key video. We're just getting started, baby. I'm so happy you could join us today, and if you're new here, welcome. We are a realm dedicated to psychedelics and sacred plant medicine, all about demystifying and destigmatizing the trip. If you get a kick out of this video, please be sure to subscribe to this channel. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon at Chrysantilis. There are many things to consider when you're looking at trying mushrooms for the first time. So before I hop into my six questions, here are some things that could affect your journeying. Number one is age. If you are under the age of 21, it is not currently recommended for you to sit with psychedelics and that is the information that I will give you. Do with it what you will. The effects of psychedelics on a developing prefrontal cortex is still being studied, but we do know the effects of psychedelics and how they affect our serotonin, our serotonin ceilings, and yes, that's what I will say. I'll say it's not recommended for people under the age of 21. The next thing to consider is whether you suffer from anxiety and depression. For me, psychedelics has definitely helped my anxiety and depression. But if you have a challenging trip, could that worsen your current situation? Could some things bubble up for you? Could some memories come to the surface? Many people have very challenging experiences. If you get set and setting right your first time, you shouldn't have too much of a challenging experience, but it could be scary sitting with these medicines for the first time. It's good to just check in with yourself where you're at and know that it doesn't affect everyone the same way. So while there's studies showing that it helps significantly, depression, anxiety, PTSD, even some addictions, we always run the risk of being the exception to the rule. And in asking ourselves this question, should we try magic mushrooms? That is what we are weighing. The risk, benefit. Daring today, aren't we? So that's also something to think about. And yeah, I think that the most that we can do is to do our research, which y'all are already doing, and give reverence to the medicine. And today we're gonna talk about all that good stuff in this video. And side note, please take notes during this video. So, all of that being said, let's hop into these questions. The following video is made for the purpose of education and harm reduction. We are not promoting the use, procurement, or possession of any plant medicine or substance. We encourage everyone to do further research and prioritize safety. The first question, where is this pressure or curiosity coming from, okay? If you're wanting to dive into this pool, you're either feeling curiosity or you're feeling a pressure. I would argue that if you're pressured, you're not actually wanting to dive into this pool. And this is the question you should ask yourself, where is that coming from? Is it pressure coming to you externally? Are your friends going on a camping trip this weekend and everybody's planning on journeying together and you're the only person in the group who hasn't journeyed yet? That I would say is an example of a pressuring situation. Or have you been thinking about this for a few years? You've read the studies, you've heard good things, and it's coming from an internal place of curiosity. If your answer is that it's coming from inside, it's coming from yourself, and you are internally curious, I would say yes, keep watching this video, keep going forward. If it's coming from a place of your peers, externally, or you just feel like it's what everybody else is doing. Just say no, little bro. I would say let's keep it on the back burner and wait until it's something you feel a little bit more internally called to do. Also, if you're watching this and you're pressuring anybody to try magic mushrooms for the first time, please don't do that. What is your malfunction? It's so unnecessary. Everyone is on their own time. As much as I love the medicine, I would never pressure anybody to try it in their entire lives. If you're curious, you're curious, and that's a beautiful thing. But please do not try to transmute somebody's apprehensiveness into curiosity. That's just not cool, and it could end up leading to them really, really regretting the situation. Question number two. 
Am I familiar with the lineage of this medicine? Do I know where psilocybin mushrooms come from? Do I know their historical context? Can I name their homeland in Mexico? Can I name the Mazatec people and other tribes as some of the originators of this practice? Can I name Maria Sabina as the person who we can trace the current lineage in the Western world to? Do we know her story? Do we know the betrayal? Do we know the consequences that she had to face for this medicine coming to what now is modern day us? And if we don't know how this medicine got to us from its tribal place of origin, and we haven't spoken those names, I'd say, friend, do some research, read the stories, listen to some episodes of a podcast, and then circle back around with the medicine when you're familiar with their context. This is something that not everybody is going to tell you, that's, that not everybody agrees with. It's something that I think is extremely, extremely important because when you have an understanding of the history of this medicine, you're gonna have a better idea of how it can serve you and how you can serve it. Mushrooms were known as los niños, the children, known to embody the spirit of children, kind of like this childlike wonderment. You might experience it for yourself. This medicine was also used for community connection. It was used for family connection, to squash beef between family and friends, and to just find a communal place of peace. And knowing that and knowing its history, it really will make the difference with your personal experience with this medicine. I can say that speaking from firsthand experience, taking this medicine outside of its context, not knowing its context, it's a completely different experience than sitting with this medicine and giving reverence to that history. So yes, I'd say if you are familiar with the lineage, yes, continue on. If you're not, let's table this. Keep watching the video, but let's table this idea and do a little bit more research. Number three, and this is the most difficult one, especially for me, have I had a solid two previous weeks of mental health? Okay, so that means no big stressful events, no traumatic events. This can be really hard. As someone who has a lived experience of anxiety and depression, some years I might not get many of those two weeks, right? So for me, it's all about waiting until I can say, okay, maybe I haven't had the best previous two weeks of my life, but it's been the best previous two weeks of this year so far. And I'm in a solid place to sit and journey and to travel to the cosmos and wherever else I might go. So if the answer is no, and you have to get to a solid place that could involve starting to see a trauma-informed CBT therapist. I'm looking for one myself right now. It could be starting to take walks and just incorporating, I'd say, difficult habits into your everyday life to be able to be in a better place to sit with the medicine. I hate it when people just say, oh, go take a walk. It's really not that easy. I know I suffer from anxiety and depression. I completely understand. But yeah, just getting to a place that's as good as you feel like you can get in the now with the solid previous two weeks. So if that answer is yes, if it's been a solid two weeks, then I'd say keep moving forward. I'd also add, have you been planning for two weeks? This is just like an extra question. My most impactful and wondrous and incredible journeys have been ones that I planned out in advance, at least a week to a month out in advance. I've seen from firsthand experience, and my friends can also vouch for this, that there is a correlation between difficult trips and journeying impulsively. Like, hey, my friend just brought these mushrooms over this evening and I've never tried them before, but let me just do this now. Yeah, that can be a lot more difficult. And then also in that two weeks leading up, it's great to meditate. It's great to get your mind into a space where it can receive the lessons of the journey as best as possible. Again, I know number three directly impacts people who suffer from depression and anxiety. And I get that some folks don't have more than four solid weeks in a year. And this is all part of healing. It's all part of the process. It's the hardest rule out of all of them for me. I will say that. Okay. If you have had a solid past two weeks of mental health, we're going to keep moving forward. Okay. Okay. Yoga baby. Yoga baby, yes.
You're a very good baby and I love you. Question number four. Am I on any SSRIs or antidepressants? It is not dangerous to combine all antidepressants with magic mushrooms, point blank. But some of them, namely SSRIs, can be fraught and can trigger a condition called serotonin syndrome, which in extreme cases can be lethal. I don't think I've personally heard of someone dying from SSRIs and magic mushrooms, but that doesn't mean really dangerous situations haven't happened and maybe I just haven't heard of the situations. If you are on any SSRIs or antidepressants, you're going to want to look into contraindications. You can look this up on a contraindication calculator. I will link one in the description of this video. And just be sure to do your research with all of your medications and how they might interact with psilocybin mushrooms. This is an instance where having a challenging, a dangerous experience can be completely avoidable. You're just going to want to do that work and make sure that you're not taking anything that is going to severely negatively interact with magic mushrooms. If you answer no, I'm not taking SSRIs or any antidepressants, you can keep moving forward. And then if you are taking antidepressants, especially ones that don't mix so well with magic mushrooms, I would consult a medical professional and just double check what you should do. Is there a tapering off situation? Could you quit it cold turkey for a week? Just talking to someone who knows the science and knows the medicine behind that. Quick aside, forgot to mention, I got a new water bottle this week at the NorCal Renaissance Festival. It is a gourd. It has its own strap. The cork has a strap. I'm in love with it. Secondly, if you are taking antidepressants that aren't necessarily SSRIs, but are another antidepressant, there's something that can occur, which is known as the blunting effect, where there is a cancellation of the magic of the mushrooms. I don't know about the subconscious benefits that you might get, but basically, let's say you spent $40 to get on this rock chip. Uh, that is, it's giving money down the drain. It's giving, just wasting your money on the medicine uh, when you have expectations that there are going to be intended effects and those intended effects do not happen. There is a possibility of cancellation with a variety of medications. Moving on. Question number five. Do I have a family history of schizotypal or schizoaffective disorders? This is important to know, especially for those in their early 20s. I've seen it personally, firsthand. People go pretty off the deep end with the frequency of taking psychedelics and that triggering schizophrenia. This is something that is a known known. Sitting with magic mushrooms without proper guidance, especially by a psychedelic therapist, someone who's trained and can walk you through your family history with this. If you have this family history, it can be something to trigger a more accelerated onset. There is an instance where maybe you were going to have your onset of schizophrenia at 23. You take magic mushrooms when you're 19 and all of a sudden that onset has been accelerated and begins, right? I've seen this happen with some of my friends. It's important that if you do have that family history, then you find someone who can give you solid guidance in the psychedelic community. I now know that it is not impossible to sit with psychedelics if you have this family history. You just seriously need to find someone who can work with you within having that family history or within actually having a schizotypal or schizoaffective disorder already and working within that. Any kind of family history you have, it's important to do your research on how that interacts with magic mushrooms or whatever plant medicine, psychedelics you plan to take. So yes, if you answered no to that question and you do not have a family history, we can continue moving forward. If you did answer that question, yes, and you do have a family history, Again, like the other things, we're gonna wanna table this experience and just figure out the best way to move forward with professionals who really know their stuff and really know what they're talking about. And we're gonna wanna find folks who have worked with people with your family history and the past. And uh, moving forward to our last one. Ooh, 
Number six, do I genuinely feel called to sit with this medicine? Sitting with magic mushrooms is establishing a mutual relationship. It is a relationship where you are serving the medicine and the medicine is serving you, it's mutually symbiotic. Do you feel like you have the space for this new relationship to serve the medicine? The medicine will give you guidance. The medicine will give you some lessons. Do you have the space to integrate that into your life? For me, a lot of the times I deal with a sugar addiction. I will sit with magic mushrooms and not crave sugar at all for a week. But do I have the space where I'm going to respect that lesson and continue not to eat sugar the next week? That's a different question. And quite frankly, folks, I'm still working on it. But yes, if you genuinely feel called to sit with this medicine, please listen to that. If you genuinely feel like you're ready, especially if you knew that you weren't at a place where you're ready before, if everything is lining up in terms of health for you, whether that be mental health or physical health or relational health, if you're finally at a solid place where you're saying, hey, I would love a guiding hand with my healing journey, with this experience, I would love to have a creative time, I would love to connect with my friends in this way, and you know, your friends wanna connect with you in that way, then I would say that's awesome. In terms of consent, if it's not an enthusiastic yes, it's a no. If you're still deciding whether you wanna do this, you still have a lot of anxiety around it, you know, listen to that too. Nobody is rushing you into experiencing this, especially not me, especially not Winston. We want y'all to have a good time, a safe time, and the best way you can plan on that is getting set and setting right and feeling genuinely, like we mentioned internally, called. So do you genuinely feel called to sit with this medicine? Ask yourself that question right now. Do you genuinely feel called to sit with magic mushrooms? If you have a smile on your face and you're saying, yes, I have no more questions for you, please consider all the other parameters and questions from this video and let me know how it goes. I wish everyone the best with their journey. I hope we can all prioritize safety in addition to having fun and in addition to spreading love and our inner peace. And yeah, if you have a takeaway from this video, I hope it is that it's no rush. If you don't try magic mushrooms for the first time in 10 years, 15 years, heck, maybe the best time for you to try it is 25 years down the line, okay? Nobody is rushing you, okay? Yes, Winston says nobody is rushing you. And uh, just take it easy, take it slow. It's a relationship. Again, we can ask the medicine for permission. When we sit with the medicine, we can greet it. Hello, how are you doing? Ask it for permission, thank it, all this kind of stuff. It's about creating this relationship through our entire life. Even if you only sit with the mushrooms once, they will be with you for the rest of your life. That is scientifically speaking. They actually warp your brain chemistry. They are thought to potentially even contain a sort of neurogenesis effect in your mind. So that's really super special and that will last for your entire life. And this experience will last for the rest of your life. So yeah, take it slow. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. It means the most. I also have some cool Keep It Trippy merch on Threadless. I am on Patreon at Chrysantilis. Please check out my page and support if you have some extra pocket change. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at Chrysantilis. My TikToks are pretty funny. I made some fun Burning Man TikToks recently. And yeah, that's it for today. Wishing you peace, wishing you a lovely journey, and don't forget to keep it trippy.